Welcome to Water Balance of River Basins. My name is Andreas de Jong. Afghanistan is experiencing a severe drought this year. Countless canals were dry during the irrigation season and many crops have failed. As a consequence, malnutrition and starvation threaten many Afghan people, especially the children. Water stored as snow in the mountains of Afghanistan is a key component of the annual water balance. And in today's video, I'll show you how to quantify this important water resource. You'll need a web browser to access the USGS FuseNet website, from where we'll download the snow water equivalent data, which we'll then process in Excel. Let's start with some maps. Okay, let's Google USGS FuseNet, and we'll find here the early warning website. Click on it. And basically, you've got two choices here. You can go to Data Portals, Asia, Central Asia, Afghanistan, or click directly on the map and select Afghanistan. Now it's filtered out Afghanistan. We should also filter out the product types. So come to the bottom here, click on Snow Cover Products. There's about 10 different maps. Today we'll compare the snow water equivalent with basins with the snow water equivalent anomaly with basins. Just click on the checkbox and it will open side by side. The snow water equivalent is on the left and the anomaly on the right. Now let's go back to the middle of March, which is the end of winter. Okay, so you can see that this year there was not a lot of snow around because we have all these pale blue colors here, which are confirmed in the anomaly map, which are shown here in brown, which means that the snow water equivalent difference was negative, so well below the 2002 to 2016 average. What we can do is Compare it to a wet year, 2019, for example, at the same time. And you can see that it's much more blue here. A lot more snow was around. And the green colors in the anomaly map indicate that it is also well above average. So that was 2019, a very wet year. And if we look at 2020, previous year, it also didn't look too good. You can see that there's a few brown areas, a few green areas. So it was better than this year, but not as good as 2019. Okay, let's uh, download it as a PDF. And uh, we can also download it as a PNG. If you want to include it directly in a report. Okay, so that's uh, what we have in terms of maps. You can also look at uh, how things changed over time. If we just look at our snow water current map here. Open it and we can click through the individual days. So I'm now going forward in time, March 19th. So we can go forward, we can go backwards, or we can just play the whole thing. So it'll automatically take us through the different days as we advance out of the end of winter and into the spring snow melt. So that was really exciting. Let's go and get the data. Go to software and I prefer to use the early warning explorer light. Click on it and select the one for Central Asia. You can pick other parts of the world from this drop down list up here. Okay, so here's our countries with the admin one boundaries and admin two boundaries and even FuseNet mapping units, which is just for Afghanistan. Okay, let's zoom in on Afghanistan and let's click on Herat. It gives us the chirps precipitation, the temperature, the modus and DVI, the runoff, the evapotranspiration and even soil moisture at different depths. So that's really useful. Now, if we click on the river basins, we have them available for Afghanistan, Pakistan and Tajikistan. Let's click on the Helmand River Basin. And here again we have chips precipitation and the snow water volume which appears to be missing. Well there seems to be a bug here. Just switch off the other countries and try again. Click on the Helmand River Basin. And there you go, problem solved. Here's the snow water volume for the river basin and the snow water volume anomaly. 
Clearly this past water year has been a disaster. We are really in the red. And uh, we can go here and have a look. I think it was only beaten in 2003 to 4 when we had even less snow water volume during the melt season. Okay, so that's for the river basins. Uh, there's one here called dams, unfortunately only for Afghanistan, so just click on it. And seeing as we're in Helmand, let's have a look at the Kajaki Dam. The only data we get for the dams is the snow water volume and the anomaly. Again, we can see that uh, things are pretty bad, very negative anomaly compared to the average year over the past 20 years. Okay, so what we can do here is if you click on this little star here, you can download it as a PNG and as a CSV. So let's have a look at that data now in Excel. Okay, so I imported all the data into Excel. We have the month, the day, the minimum, the maximum, and the average snow water, water volume, as well as the data for each water year. It's very strange that they should start on the 1st of July. And uh, there's some other weird things. For example, here we have two 1st of October here. And as we move further down, November apparently has 28 days. And here we go, March. One, two, three, one, two, three. So uh, there's something uh, very strange going on here. But anyway, I put all the data according to their format starting on the 1st of July until the end of June 2021. Now, if I plot this data, you'll see that apparently the snow starts falling in August and everything is melted by February, which is clearly rubbish. The next thing I did was I took the same data. So this is all the water year data here. But I assume that it actually starts on the 1st of October all the way until the end of September. And when we plot that in the pivot chart, we get a nice looking chart where the snow starts falling towards the end of October, November, and most of it has melted by May, June. So which makes much more sense. This is uh, the PNG chart which I downloaded for the Kajaki Dam. Here is the first data set according to the CSV file. If we overlay them, clearly there is a problem. Rubbish in, rubbish out. Here is again the uh, PNG file. Here is the data, assuming that the data starts on the 1st of October. And there is a perfect match. So I think USGS uh, needs to do a bit of quality control on the data. Okay, let's have a look at snow water data processing. We download a CSV file from the FuseNet website and the next thing which we need to do is to import it as a data table into Excel. Now I've got a template here. I'll leave a link to it in the description below this video if you want to have a look at it. And the data table is this one here. So basically it's all the information that we can get from the USGS with the exception that we're going to start the day on the 1st of October rather than the 1st of July. Now I've used the 1st of October 1900, but that's not so important. I'm just looking at the day and the month here. So to make sure that it ends at the end of September, uh, 30th of September. Okay, now the data table is not in a very useful format and we really need to have it in database format. Although we can do some simple charts with this table, it's really cumbersome and what we really need is to have everything in this format. So basically there's only one data point per row of data. I'll just quickly show you how you can make this format. So we're going to grab the last water year 2020 to 2021. Shift control arrow down, control C, go to database. And in this column here, the snow water volume, we paste it. And we're going to double click here on the plus sign. It should start on the 1st of October and it should end on the 30th of September. Always check the bottom because this data table does not include the 29th of February, which can cause a shift in leap years. Okay, our database is ready. What we're going to do next is to extract the data using pivot tables and then to present it in pivot charts. So the first pivot table that we're going to use is the one which extracts all the daily data 
it is arranged by month and date. And the reason I've done that is because I want to force it to start in October rather than in January, which is the standard. So this spreadsheet is controlled from the dashboard and uh, you can switch on and off different individual years. So for example, 2019, which was a flood year, you can see it here. If we go to the chart, uh, there we go. Uh, we can switch on multiple years, but maybe that gets a bit crowded. So I recommend that you only look at one year at the time. So 2021 showing the maximum, the average and the minimum distribution of snow water volume. The next pivot which we're going to look at is the one which shows us how much snow water volume is available at the end of winter. So if we go to our chart here, you see there's a kind of a peak which is around early March. So I'm not quite sure when, let's say 8th of March there, maybe 10th of March. So I thought if we just pick the 15th of March, that should uh, be kind of surely the end of winter. We could say also 15th of February, for example, or 15th of uh, December. And you can see how the snow water volume has changed between the different water years. So I've picked the 15th of March, but you can, of course, say, oh, I don't want that. I want to have the 1st of February, for example. So you have to go up here to the top. And for example, this one, 1st of February. Although, of course, that is not exactly the end of the um, winter. So I recommend um, for this particular case that we pick the 15th of March. And in the pivot table, you can also see how the snow water volume has changed between the different years. And here we can even calculate how the 2021 water year compares to the average snow water volume for all the years on record. And you can see that 2021 had approximately 30% of the snow water volume in the middle of March compared to the average of the last 20 years. So this is an incredibly powerful chart because at a single glance you can see that basically there's not much uh, water here stored as snow and this situation has only been this bad in 2004 and 2001. But that's quite a few years ago, most people will not remember that we can perhaps say that it was similar to 2018, but a little bit worse, and uh, that might uh, make people understand. Okay, so there's one last pivot that uh, I had a look at, which is the monthly snow water volume. And that's this one here, pivot MM. So basically we have here all the months of the year, starting with October, and then we have the average snow water volume for that month in the different water years. And I try to do a bit of a three-dimensional chart. So you can see here, this is 2021. The snow water volume increased till about February and then uh, starts to uh, decrease as we get the snow melt. What's really interesting here is that there doesn't seem to be any trends as such. Maybe there's a bit of a hump here, but there's so much variation between the individual water years. Sometimes there's a whole bunch of years which have uh, low flows but then you might have a very dry year and then a very wet year the right the next year. So basically there's a lot of variation between the years. This is a more conventional way of presenting this data, but I think it looks a bit messy. So actually my favorite chart is this one by far. I think this is something that should be done at the end of every winter as we did in the Panjamo River Basin for so many years. And it is a really powerful to show the different people who are interested in water resource management what the situation is likely to be in the coming flood season. So if you see that there's such little water available, really the farmers should be reducing their crop areas or even changing crop types to try to use as little water as possible during the coming growing season. Okay, that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this little video. Please uh, download my Excel template, have a look at it and maybe you can use it for your own purposes. See you in the next video.